Do I have anyone watching who still remembers when rates were above 18%? If so, raise your hand or a thumbs up will suffice. So since then, they've done nothing but come down. Now that was a long time ago. In 2019, rates were near 5% like they are now and no one panicked. Yet according to the news in 2021, rates had jumped from 2.625 to 3.25. And in 2022, we saw rates climb from 3.25 to 3.5, and they're still climbing, but it's all relative. We know now just how much interest rates have risen, but where do we expect them to go? When you hit rock bottom, the on there is only one direction to go. The low rates have been, that we've been enjoying have been fueled by the Fed action, high liquidity and a shocked economy, which propelled an extreme uh, housing demand with limited supply. Quite simply, the pandemic may have been the single biggest boost to the housing market we've ever seen. Now, did you know that Colorado's real estate market is currently worth $1.2 trillion? From 2009 to 2019, it gained $212 billion. But get this, in the last two years, from 2020 to 2021, the market gained $208 billion alone. Demand pushed prices up double digits per year while supply moved so fast it felt like it didn't even exist. We saw record home sales the last two years while everyone lamented the lack of inventory. Still, homes are spending very little time available for sale. As a result, standing inventory of homes for sale remains below 2,000 listings. The, sh the shortage of inventory is expected to result in ongoing price increases. However, the supply of new listings on the market has increased gradually as expected as we enter the spring selling season. As I hear my daughter thanking God for her shelter in her prayers each night, I'm reminded that housing fills an essential human need. I always tell my clients that your house is first your home, your sanctuary, your escape, rather than solely an investment, so make it yours. Make it suit your lifestyle, especially over the past couple of years where home seems to have been redefined. But it definitely seems like housing represents more than just a shelter for anyone who's, been, who's seen their wealth increase through real estate over the past several years. From 2020, the average home price went from about $400,000 to over $575,000. That's a 44% increase in just a couple of years. That also makes real estate a true investment vehicle and not just a shelter, in case there's any question. Now, locally, the median price of a home sold in February appreciated by 22% compared to last February. Sales of homes priced between 600 to 800,000 are exploding, up 39% from last February, while 60% of all listings sold at a price above list. Now, Redfin's report for the same pe time period estimated that it was more like 75% of listings that sold for over asking price. Do you think investors were aware of the record gains in the marketplace? Of course they were. In the last quarter of 2021, investors accounted for over 16% of the buyers, which was a staggering gain of over 51% from the year prior. This also puts added stress on the competitiveness for home buyers in the lower price ranges, especially sub 500,000. Now, speaking of stress and strain, we get a lot of questions from people wanting to know what the impact of all that's going on globally will be on the housing market in the US. Of course, in mid-February, we saw Russia and Ukraine, which added strain to this global supply chain of oil and gas, fertilizer and wheat, and iron ore and manganese. So basically, food, fuel, and manufacturing costs have all risen. Global supply chains were, of course, already strained and causing inflation. But inflation, which was once looked at as, a to as transitory, remember that buzzword? Is now being recognized as here to stay, at least until the Fed can, can curb it. The Fed's action to stave off worsening inflation has caused interest rates to rise, and it will be the Fed's goal to slow the economy's growth enough to likely cause a recession. Now, the R word is ugly, and we all remember the Great Recession all too well because it's fresh in our minds. But keep this in mind, recession is technically defined by just two consecutive quarters of declining GDP growth. And in four of the last five recessions where housing was not the primary cause of the recession itself, home values actually rose. The upside of that is if the Fed induces a recession to slow runaway inflation, increases in interest rates will eventually moderate and likely come back down. Until then, economists predict home prices will finally level off again as interest rates are expected to steadily increase or at least slow to a more gradual modest rate. 
Now, we're in an interesting time in real estate, so I really urge you to stay informed. Keep in mind that the news headlines are designed to terrify rather than clarify. We're here to clarify. We've got our ear to the ground in the marketplace. So subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our clarifying updates rather than getting confused by all the noise around us. And as always, we understand that everyone's situation is unique. Now more than ever, who advises you actually matters. So please give us a call to discuss how this current real estate market impacts you. We would love to hear from you. Hello.